Hi everyone, welcome back to Fleece and Wools Friday. I'm Michelle with Fleece and Wools, here to teach you some life skills with sewing and crafting. In today's video, I'm going to be making a super secret project. And the reason I have to be a little quieter today is because my husband is just two rooms away and, well, a hallway and a room away, and we're making his Christmas present today. So, I will show you what I have. I got this at a local thrift shop. It is a nice tray, but it has um, the ability to put photos inside. It is a little worse for wear, broken, but we're going to fix it, replace some things, and make it special. Um, I did print out as well as copy and collect some mentos from um, our almost seven years together. So let's get started. All right, so besides cleaning this thing, we are going to also need to um, take it apart completely so we can know how to fix it. So I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of fabric, give it a little wipe down, and I'll probably clean it a little bit more again once um, Christmas comes around. All right, uh, so inside we're going to remove this glass. Wow, this is actually really nice thick glass. So we're going to just gently, hopefully gently, put it to the side. Pull out this inner piece, which we'll probably we will use as a template more than anything, and close it. We do have these pieces that we have to glue back on with the glass inside. Um, I have my hot glue gun warming up. It looks like it's almost ready. So it looks like this piece is also kind of coming up. Now this was applied with little tacks it looks like, but I'm just going to use some hot glue. I'm gonna put this glass back in its home. Get it in there. There we go. And reapply all of these strips. So I'm going to put a thin bead of hot melt and secure these down as best as I can. Okay. Sadly, I've only got three of the four strips, so we're gonna do what we can to fix this as best as we can. I think instead of just adding this third piece, I'm going to cut this in half and put one on each side. I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife. Let's see. So 10. Cut it in half. Looks like it's just a thick amount of chipboard, so it's easy to cut. I'm gonna place this towards the center. Get it secure on all four sides, or as best we can. I'm also going to try to fill in the gaps. This hot glue isn't too hot, so I can touch it with my finger. Try to fill in between 
the, the frame and the piece. You could also use wood filler. Um, I'm going for efficiency and speed. And I know in my household, um, this'll last up, so I'm not too concerned. All right, let's see. It feels more secure now and it closes. So that's step one. Next, I will go grab some scrapbooking paper. I'll be right back. All right, so this is my big pile of scrapbooking paper. Um, I'm gonna put this one aside because this is gold and silver. This page could work since it's pretty simple. I don't wanna choose something with too much pattern. All right, so I'm gonna set this one out. Let's see what else we have. You just have a plain teal in here. pieces that I think would just look nice. Ooh, we have this. We have a lot of fun pieces in here. I might use that one. All right, put this aside. I like the plain white. I'm kind of, whoop. I'm kind of going to nix this ombre one. This is just a little too much. And I think, I think I'm just going to do the white. All right, so... We're not going to use this, but we're going to use it as our template to hopefully figure out if we have enough paper to measure. About an inch and a half. We have plenty. Okay. So this will have to be two pieces of paper kind of adhered together, which shouldn't be a problem. And we can turn off our hot glue. Mm. I'll leave our hot glue on just in case. You never know when an emergency might strike. Okay. Leave some of these out of the way. And use this as our template to cut. And if you're slow and careful, you can also use it as your ruler. Now, obviously this is a project that not everyone can do because it's very particular. Um, I was lucky to find this where I did, but that doesn't mean that, you know, you'll be able to find the exact one, but you might be able to find something very similar. I'm gonna take this bottom piece off. these two together at their flat edges.
and I'm going to trim this piece off as well using the same thing. Why not? Okay, so now that we have our background piece, I'm going to look at this and see if there's anything I can pull off. The only thing I can see is really this ribbon. Um, I mean, if this said something sweeter, I'd take it, but this is very travel inspired. So I'm just going to toss this, put it to the side, really. All right, so next step is gathering all the mementos that we have which are some tickets to different concerts movies ball games and a few personal pieces that i'm gonna hide away some of these are copies like this is a copy of a drawing i didn't want to put the actual drawing in because they don't know how waterproof this is. I don't know how long it's going to last. So um, these tickets, I'm okay if something were to happen. Same with this card, but um, this drawing and our wedding photos. I use copies. So I did more than one copy um, so I wasn't sure if I wanted to cut out our silhouettes, but we will see where we go. The first thing we're going to do is just kind of trim everything and go from there. Alright, so this piece and this piece I'm going to leave face down just because they're um, little things between him and I, just a little note and an inside joke, um, and I know that he would want me to keep some things a little bit more private on the internet. So here is our background, we have lots of fun prints we can use, kind of cover up that seam, um, lots of pictures. I might shrink this down a little bit or cut it down. These can be put together. And this is just the, the fun part of laying it out, seeing what works, and then um, eventually taping it all down and having it ready. So I hmm. kind of want more of this showing, so I might trim a little bit more. But let's get a full layout first, and then worry about backgrounds. I am going to trim this.
All right. So now that I have my basic layout, I'm actually going to ignore that. Um, and a couple of other little pieces that I can put in. I'm gonna, um, normally I would actually take a picture, but you're on my phone, so I can't. Um, so what I'm gonna do instead is actually lay down the back room, background pieces kind of over the photos and everything until I decide where I want what. Um, I have a great idea with this one. So I'm gonna put that down for a second. Um, Hmm. I'm not going to see a lot of that up to here. Now I'm just going to kind of wedge it under. So this is just um, actually an envelope from a credit card company, but I really liked the pattern and the metallicness of it. So I'm going to use this and put it behind a couple of little mementos as a background color, kind of an outline. When cutting around curves, kind of keep your scissors still, slowly squeeze them together while you move the piece that you're cutting. Trim that a little bit. This will be a fun shape to cut around. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a big fan of threes, so I want to see if I can add something else sparkly over there. Just gotta figure out what. Hmm. Let's see. to make the shape of one of these hearts but what I might have to do is kind of take mm, cut one of them off or maybe cut one that's under this piece so this heart isn't being seen I'm going to tape the top edge, Let's see if that helps. go so if we put this back where it was I think that one I think I'm gonna raise that a little bit and I think we're ready to start adhering with some double stick tape okay so we're gonna carefully remove some things and adhere the bottom piece first. Try to just slide it out of the way.
Alright. Now the test to make sure we didn't forget anything. We're good. Alright, so the next step is to trim off any of the edges. There's only a couple of things that got that fell off the edges. I'm just gonna trim them. The nice sharp knife. And now we are ready to put this in. Oh, I forgot about this little bow. Uh, I could put it here. Kind of like that. I'm gonna stick it on. Let's see. We're just gonna use double-sided tape. All right. Time to insert it. Now, if you can't find something like this at your, oh no, at your local store, you can also, um, you can also buy a picture frame and do it that way. What I'm finding is that this is a little long, so our measurements might have been a little off, which is okay. We could just trim. Let's see. How did that happen? Mistakes happen. We will fix it. Let's see. If we were to put it right here. And close it. I'm gonna do this before I trim it. I think that still has everything we want to show. So take this away. And honestly, this is actually probably a good thing because you'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. Something I will scoot over is this little guy though, because I don't want this getting trimmed. Back with our stencil, our template. A little sad that we have to trim it, but that's okay. And this is why I'm using things that I either have photocopied or just printed out or things that I don't really mind trimming because this could happen. So let's try that again. Beautiful. Stick it in. And we're all set. Like I said, if you want to do something like this yourself and you can't find um, a similar object, you can use picture frame, add your own handles. You could do that with um, just cabinet poles and use adhesive, uh, strong adhesive to add that on. Um, or maybe you'll luck out and find one of these like me. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video and are having a wonderful Fleece and Moles Friday. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!